Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at one of my favorite tools to be able to create some nice little diagrams for the purposes of our YouTube videos, my courses, and also quite possibly for some of your courses. And so oftentimes you'll find that it is better to convey information visually rather than try to write this big long explanation. You've probably heard the expression, the picture is worth a thousand words. Well, sometimes you can find yourself where diagrams and images are better at explaining the concept, particularly to a non-technical audience. And so for example, what we're going to do is we are going to use draw.io and what is also known as app.diagrams.net to create some flow charts for our applications, as well as looking at block diagrams. Now, in some earlier videos, I've already created some block diagrams showing you how our main is connected to some of our functions. And as I was working through those to create the content for those videos, I thought, you know, it probably would be a bad idea for me to just simply show you how to use this particular web application this particular web tool because it is very useful. And again, we will find ourselves using it in the future. So the first thing that you want to do is go to your favorite web browser and type in either draw.io or app.diagrams.net. I'll leave the links in the comments for this particular video. And since we're starting over from scratch here, we are going to simply create than a new diagram. Now, for this particular example, I'm not going to go terribly deep. I'm really just going to show you how the application works, give you some quick tips, and also show you how to get some output from the application, some useful output from the application and the different file extensions that you might be dealing with. So it doesn't really matter which one you pick. Uh, we later on, for instance, we'll be using the class diagrams, the flow charting tools, and so on. But for right now, we're just simply going to create a blank diagram. It's gonna prompt you then to go ahead and save the file. And you can tell here that I've already been working with it just a little bit. I'm gonna call this one rather unimaginatively sample number one. The idea here is that we're just gonna use this as a quick demo here. You go ahead and save it and you get this blank grid that looks a little bit like engineering graph paper. Now, the first thing that you will be happy to hear is that most of your hotkeys work, most of your scrolls work, your panning. Most of that's pretty similar to any other application. As a matter of fact, you can actually get the desktop version of this, although I've been incredibly happy with the web-based application. I've used this tool now for many, many, many years. And so what you can do is you can simply hold the control key down if you're on a Windows machine and scroll in and out with your mouse. And again, you can zoom much like you can with your web browser and with other tools. So again, this video is just meant to be a quick introduction. So I'm gonna just go over here and grab some components, nothing fancy. I'm gonna just essentially repeat the start of one of my earlier videos where I was focusing on the interaction between our main in a C application and one of our functions. And to start off with, I'm simply going to indicate then that there is a main function and I'm going to drag a, another rectangle over here, make it about the same size. And again, most of this should be pretty intuitive. And I'm just going to indicate that it is an integer. We're going to call it function A. Again, not very creative. It's going to accept a double, and it's going to accept a double X. Again, the point behind this isn't necessarily to demonstrate any one technique or anything like that, but just to give you a good start on how to use the application. So um, if you recall from that earlier video, we were talking about how main would interact with a function. In this case, you might wanna draw one of your arrows going from your main to the function. If you recall also from one of those videos, I kind of had this offset just a little bit. That allows for us to do things like come along here now and draw a second arrow connecting the function back to the main. And here, all of our hotkeys work. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this one and redraw it. I don't think I connected it adequately with the other block. There we go. And now what we can do is we can just simply drag this over. Occasionally, you have a little problem with some of your arrows. I noticed one issue like this in one of my videos. Unfortunately, it was too late. But you could see here that you can quickly make some modifications. 
again, you can see here that I'm simply just scrolling in and out. And that is just by holding the control key down and using my desktop wired mouse. At this point, then we can just add some text here. This is a little unintuitive. Uh, you can actually come over here and you can just grab the text or you can double click somewhere on the field here. You could add the text. In this particular case, we are passing a double from our main to our function A. And in this case, we are returning an int. Again, don't focus too much on the details of what we are doing in this particular video, but rather on the overall process of how you would go about creating these components and connecting them. Again, there is a ton of features in Draw.io. Um, even in all the years that I've used it, I've barely touched some of the features. It's just a really great tool for quickly throwing a diagram together. Are there probably some better tools out there, some more sophisticated tools? Absolutely. Now, you can also notice that when you click on a component, you get some properties as, as well as the text, the style, the text, and the arrangement. Uh, you can modify the text, the arrow headers, uh, arrowheads, excuse me, all sorts of different things that you can do with each of the components. And I encourage you to play around with it a little bit. But once you are, in fact, happy with your diagram, then of course, what you want to make sure to do is to go ahead and do a save. You can also do a save as. But the other thing that I would like to point out real quick is that you do have the ability to export. And you can see here that you've got any number of possibilities. Um, I'm gonna go through two of them. I'm gonna go through exporting as a PNG file and as a PDF. I'm gonna do the PNG just simply because it's a generally a lightweight file that can be used for instance in Microsoft PowerPoint. So we're gonna walk through that in just a second. The easiest one is, of course, going to be just the PDF. That's going to create a separate file. You get prompted uh, with some questions here, depending on what portion of the diagram that you're trying to uh, save. In this case, I'm just going to say include a copy of my diagram. And for right now, I'm just going to export. I'm going to pick my device. It's going to download it. You can go find it in your downloads folder. And give me just a second here. And you can see, grab the wrong screen. There is our sample underscore 01.draw.io.pdf. If you were to click on that, you would see you get a very basic PDF, nothing fancy in this particular case. But again, you would probably improve upon this, but it just gives you an idea of how you would go about doing this. And you can go ahead and close this out. The other one that's interesting, again, as I've said, is that if you do a file, you can do either an export as PNG, or you can also do a save as, and you get the opportunity to do the same thing as well with the editable bitmap image. Both approaches work the same. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and keep the same file name, the sample space pound one. And in this case, it allows for us to control where we have saved the file at. You can see there's our sample underscore, excuse me, our sample space pound sign one dot PNG. And just to be clear so that you know how you can do this, you can just open up PowerPoint I'm just starting off with a blank presentation here. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean out this first slide. So I literally have a blank slide to begin with. And then I can come over here to my Explorer. I can find my sample one.png. And sure enough, I can just simply add that. I can scale it and so on. But yeah, this is meant to be just a simple introduction to how you can go about using Draw.io to create some pretty nice graphics pretty quickly for one of your presentations, for one of your classes, for personal use, et cetera. So as always, hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even some suggestions and some things you'd like to see about how to use Draw.io in other ways or apps.diagram.net, feel free to reach out to me and thank you for watching.